Hey Siri, define the single mom's club. Oh, divide and conquer. All right, you know it. What's good YouTube and or Instagram? Welcome to today's video on Sterling on Cinemas. That's Cinemas with an S. Today, I'll be giving you my review for Tyler Perry Studios. Next film, The Single Moms Club on this playlist at least. So before I begin, if you are new to this video, don't forget to follow on Instagram, subscribe on YouTube, like on both ends. Share on both ends. Comment on whatever good or bad you have to say. And most importantly, watch. Watch. Alrighty. When their children face exposure because of the rural infractions in school like vandalism, five single mothers, five, must agree to organize the school's upcoming dance and fundraiser. Although they range from an alpha business professional to a working class fast food employee, the women find that they have one thing in common a need for support and an understanding ear. They formed the Single Moms Club to help ease one another's burdens and reclaim their freedom. As their stress begins to dwindle and diminish, the women find that finding love may be possible again, whether it's from another man outside of relationship, therefore starting a new one, or finding love with each other. Now, I must say, the Single Moms Club is one of those uh, Tyler Perry movies that I've seen a few times. I've probably seen it twice, this being the third time. But The Single Moms Club is easily Tyler Perry's most lighthearted, family-friendly friend, family film, second to Medea's Tough Love, which is actually next week. That's the one where Medea goes, Carton! It manages to just strike the balance between being silly and sentimental without getting or feeling too dark. I'm looking at you for color girls, and I'm looking at you temptation. But this is only a breath of fresh air by Tyler Perry standards. Tyler Perry basically takes the familiar struggle, the already familiar struggle of being a single parent, mostly on the mother's end, and making something hopeful out of it. This idea just makes the story flow and allows the five main women to shine around each other and let their respective tribulations speak for itself. Even if we already know what is going on, even if we've seen these tribulations whether it's family dysfunction, a divorce, or or father absence, whatever the case may be. In spite of Perry already exploring the hardships of being a single parent, or in this case, a single mother, he reminds us that you can still find joy and stability within your job as a domestic employee, both from your kids and from your friends who might be going through the same situations, just on different avenues. Now, I didn't bring this up a lot in my, most of my reviews on this playlist, but it is so rare. Like, I'm talking about chemistry. I rarely mention or comment on cast chemistry, but it is so rare that any Tyler Perry movie that is not Medea, without Medea, will have an amazing chemistry amongst his lead ensemble, and the Single Moms Club does that so effortlessly. From Nia Long's May all the way down to Coco Brown's Lydia, it felt like a new touch for Perry to include enough diversity in the support group. Since each of these women come from different backgrounds, different walks, you already know what the case is. They have nevertheless felt that struggle, whether it was a conscious choice like Jan, or it is just not working out like Esperanza. It was so efficient with how Tyler Perry was attentive to the different ways that a mother could end up single or choose to be single. Enter Mae Miller, the team player, the fearless leader, the, the foundation, the foundation where this club stands on. Played by Nia Long, she is a writer who loves her son and whose husband developed a drug addiction, therefore is lacking the accountability of picking up his son from school and even or even being there or leaving after leaving his son on the school step twice. Enter Jan. Wendy McLendon Covey plays her as somebody who is fine in her cell in her shell of singularity but she is still given all the burdens by her daughter for willingly choosing to run this life solo so the daughter says i want to be like you i want to raise a family i want to be married i don't want to do everything myself i don't want to act like top dog enter esperanza i will probably say that her dilemma is the worst i don't i can empathize with her because i see a lot of parents have this especially in this type, in this culture, but because she is constantly trying to be heard by her ex-husband <coughs> Santos, but is repeatedly undermined and underestimated. Plus, her daughter Veronica 
is always having her wants catered to her by Santos. Like wearing makeup at 11 years old or, or having a cell phone at 11 years old in middle school. Wait, yeah, middle school, high school, whatever, prep school. And is allowing her to do things and have things that are contrary to Esperanza's wishes. To cap it all off, she has a secret, secret relationship with her new boyfriend by night while having to tolerate Santos's BS by day. Enter Hillary, who just went through a bad divorce and lost all the alimony. And this means she lost all the financial and physical leverage that was already keeping her on her toes as a single, single parent. That means she don't have that money to use as, as financial momentum for child support. So that's sad. This just makes it worse. Enter Lydia. She pretty much has it all, has it bad already. With working at a minimum wage job, having to raise mostly boys who two of them already got locked up. One for armed robbery and one for murder. Yeah, one for armed robbery and one for murder. And had two of them get locked up. As you can see, each of the women go through the same thing. But each have different weights to them. But nevertheless, it hurts. Whether you're being crushed by a burden that weighs 10 pounds. Or being crushed by a grudge from someone else that weighs 1,000. They soon... Have have loved, have love for each other and find love with the amazing men that come into their lives. Rotten Tomatoes gives it an 18% score. 18% of all critics recommend the single moms club. At, you know, at this point, I can't really say score because that's not what the percentage on Rotten Tomatoes means. It's actually how many, I've said this before, it's ever what percentage of critics recommend the movie. So I can't really say score, just percent. From now on, strictly percent. I give the rating. They, it's just the percentage of how many critics say yes to this movie. Say yes to whatever movie. The Single Moms Club is nothing short of a testament to how much better a single parent can be when they do not have to do it along, do it all alone with other single parents. But they do it alongside other single parents. It has a lighthearted mood in the midst of some of the drama and all of the comedy making it the easiest Tyler Perry movie to watch. And by easy, I mean like it's just the easiest one to like take in. Well, not necessarily take in, but just like to experience it because like some parts of Four Color Girls was just hard to watch because it was just so tragic and so dark. But this movie is not that. It is a breath of fresh air. It is a nice refreshment to what we are used to seeing from Mr. Perry's filmography. A mix of drama and comedy, but mostly backed up by drama. Most of his Work is dominated by drama. So, <clears throat> I will give this movie a B plus 8.9 SOs out of 10. So, that is my review on The Single Moms Club. Y'all can let me know if this is in your top 10s of Tyler Perry movies or not. But you can... I'll see... Sorry. sorry. You can let me know if this is in your top 10s for the Tyler Perry movies or not. And I'll see you guys next time with my next video. Bye.